want to start with an admission today. I failed at change. I'm not some perfect person who's going to speak from on high about how great I am. No, I hated failing so much that uh, I started looking into this, started doing some research, and it turns out that two-thirds of change efforts are unsuccessful. McKinsey interviewed a 1,000 CEOs, and they found out that two-thirds of them admitted to being unsuccessful. This is the thing we must be the worst in the world at. I mean, let me ask you, would you hire a surgeon who told you that two-thirds of the time their patients died on the table? Yeah, we wouldn't do that. And yet we continue to hire ourselves to lead change, this thing we're the worst in the world at. What is wrong with us? I had to know. So I started on a journey. I started looking at, at various changes going on. I was leading changes inside corporations and organizations large and small through things like an IPO, a leverage buyout, a take private, a hostile takeover, three CEO transitions, two startups inside large organizations. Change kept following me around. And, uh, you know, I started looking at companies that were going through change. I was looking at companies that were going through change to understand why some of them were successful and most of them were failures. And I was looking at the literature, thousands upon thousands of pages to be read, what these academics, observers, consultants, people who haven't necessarily led a change, but they've got great insight. Their models and methodologies ultimately come down to strategy and execution. We need to know where we're headed, so we need to have good strategy so we can plan our changes accordingly. And we need great execution. We need smart goals, a sense of urgency, a core team to help us lead the change. We need great project management, great communications, those are the things in these models and methodologies. Because, see, when I started looking at those companies that had failed at change, they had the models and methodologies that the people who won at change had. There was something else going on here that I needed to understand. Something else was happening, and ultimately I came to understand what it was. As leaders, we have to have the right mindset. You see, we walk into changes every day with an orientation that's off base. For example, we think organizations change. We think organizations change. We walk in and sort of say, we need to change our organization. Reality is, organizations don't change. Organizations do not change. People do. If our people don't change, is there any change? Well, no. If our people don't change, there is no change. There is no change at all. We can plop a new company on top of them. We can, we can reorg. We can do all kinds of things. But if our people don't change, there is no change. And so we have these ideas. Even if we get it right and understand that it's about people, even if we understand that, we can be off base. We often think that we need to get our people to change. We need to get our people to change. And I'm here to tell you, I've got the scars to prove it. The very last thing we want to do is to get our people to change. We don't want to get our people to change because getting people to change, that's compliance. It doesn't take into account muscle memory, habit, history, the way we've always done it. People will comply, and even our very best people, they'll go back to their old ways. And we're hitting our heads against the wall going, what is wrong with our people? And yet it's us and our mindset. Because what we need to do, as I've learned the hard way, what we have to do is to get our people to want to change. We have to get our people to want to change. Change, it turns out, is a decision made by every single person. I talk to leaders all the time, and they're excited about the, the changes that they're leading, and they're moving really fast, and I'll say, what's going to get your people to want to do that? And they often look at me funny, and they sort of say, well, you know, Al, I hadn't really thought about that. I'm, I'm, the changes are exciting, but, you know, the people... There are people, they work for us, we pay them, so I guess they have to. I guess our people have to. They hadn't really thought about it. We don't even know that we don't know this when we're doing this. The thing is, our people don't have to. Our dogs, our dogs have to. If they want to treat, they have to sit or lie or beg. Our dogs have to. But our people are not our dogs, and our dogs are not our people. Our dogs don't go to the park and talk to other dogs about how cool they have it or how well-fed they are or how much their, their master's bad or good. No, our dogs are loyal. Our dogs are loyal. Our people are not. 
they can go somewhere else, do other things, especially the good ones, or they can stay inside and resist, especially the bad ones. We have to get our people to want to change. Change is a decision. We have a lot of other mindset gaps. Uh, for example, we think it's all about outcomes. And we need good outcomes. We're going to be judged by outcomes. But looking for outcomes, waiting for outcomes, is the exact opposite of what we need to do. We need good inputs. You see, we often uh, put out the perfect communications, and then we announce the change. And then the next time we're really involved in the change is on some conference call where someone's giving us an update on reds and yellows and how they're turning green. And, well, <laughs> that's not being involved in the change. That's not getting good outcomes. Sitting in a conference room waiting for reds and yellows to turn green is the equivalent of sitting on our couch, well, yelling at the players and coaches on TV. They're having absolutely no impact on what's going on on the game. Instead, we need to be player coaches. We have to be on the field, in the game, we can't even be on the sidelines. No, we have to be actually playing. People have to see by our blood, sweat, and tears how important this is because we can't just say this is important. We have to do this is important. So what is the right mindset? What is the right mindset for change? Well, I've come to understand it as something called pull. You see, if we push change onto our people, they push back. But if we pull our people to the change, they'll take us the rest of the way. Pull is about reaching our people where they are. It's about hitting on their competitive spirit. It's about getting our own hands dirty as leaders. Pull, well, pull is about listening because when people feel heard, they'll do remarkable things. And pull is about humbly asking our people to join us on the change journey. Pull is palpable, pull is powerful. Pull is how we win at change. Pull is how we lead every single day. I had one last question for myself as I was trying to pull all this together, all the people I, I, uh, I had studied and the ones I talked about today and others. Could I really teach this? Because I'm, um, I'm a mere mortal, and the people that I'd studied and talked about, well, they, they were mere mortals. They weren't mere mortals. They were... Billionaire owners of sports teams, they were movie moguls. Could I really share this to any effect? Now, I looked at it some more and I came to realize these people, they're not that different from us. They're not that different from us. What was different about them was they just had this insight. This insight that took me 20 years to figure out so I could share it with you today. And now, now you have this insight. So let me hit on your competitive spirit. Are you going to use it? Because you know what? Somebody will. Somebody will. I hope that somebody is you. I really, really do. I wish you the best on all of your change journeys. My name's Al Como. You've been a fantastic audience today. Thank you for your time. And lead well, everyone. Lead well.